Uh, so we are, we are live. Not live, but we're, everything you say is recorded. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, so we're gonna go over... You stop alt-tabbing. I'm on display capture right now. So, I guess we're gonna talk about, we're gonna discuss what we want to see, what we're excited for the stuff that was revealed on Thursday, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the X-wing live stream. Um, so right now I'm looking at the shuttle, the Zai class light shuttle. You know what surprised me the most? I I know this has been revealed for a while now, but it's a it's a two red two green with seven health. That's I don't does that stat line exist? Uh, I don't think like that exact stat line, but it's not a terribly remarkable one. For a for a crew carrier, for a designated like support crew carrier, I think it's a little bit because um, normally crew carriers are like a little bit on the beefier side. They have like eight health, but they only have the one green. Um, so it's 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 kind of durable actually for a for a crew carrier. Yeah, there's the uh, the Rebel Sheathapede, which is uh, two uh, forward, two back, and two agility, while having, like, five health, so it's not too far off. Okay, okay. Uh, so we don't know a lot about... We don't know that much. We're going to get a preview article in, I want to say, they said late September? or No, late, they said late August. Yeah, late August, they're going to start the preview articles. There is five pilots... Um, four pilots, uh, they have a remote, and I think that's probably the most interesting thing. They have some kind of device that they get to drop, some probe. There's a card for it, it's listed at zero initiative, uh, it has three green dice, and it, it can attack, so we have no idea what the fuck it does, I can't read that text. Um, it's... And then we know one pilot, we know uh, Gideon Hask. I will say it looks like Agent Terex is a pilot for it at I-3. Um, but in the reveal specifically, we got two crew members. We got the other side of, Captain, of Agent Terex, and we got Commander Pyre. What's your opinion on Agent Terex, cyborg side? Uh, I actually don't have that one in my spoiler list for whatever reason. I have to search it up real quick. Uh, during the system phase, you roll one attack dice. On a hit or crit, gain one calculate token. Otherwise, gain one jam token. And then as an action, you can transfer one calculate token or one jam token to a ship at range 0 to 3. So his first... the Back when they announced this wave, they revealed... Um, the, the human side of Agent Terex. Uh, and he could... It's you put three Calculate Tokens on the card, and then you can transfer one... You can transfer one token in the engagement phase to uh, an allied ship. However, once you're out, you have to flip into the Cyborg side, which has a, a downside sometimes. And even then, even it's not really a downside. Yeah, because you can you can definitely transfer the jam to a uh, enemy ship, so it's not it's not bad. It's just going to be very inconsistent, and I don't think it's going to see a whole lot of play because of it. Because uh, you got chopper uh, doing chopper things, and that one works out pretty well because you know what you're getting. But this one, it's like a fifty fifty. The what really it says to me is it says one this will never go on the Upsilon shuttle. Um... The Upsilon shuttle, you you want those four attack dice to be modded. Um, uh, spending yeah, action to, to action, you have to. It's only going on the she shuttle or the Z shuttle or uh, whatnot. Like, yeah, I, I just don't see it seeing any play because FO is kind of a tight list uh, for points anyway. I don't know. I, I kind of like I kind of like the other side in um, a passive sensors tie SF kind of list. Giving, giving those, giving like missile ships uh, a calculate token to go inside their target lock. I'm not, I'm not willing to discount it flat out because I think passing out calculate tokens in the engagement phase is really good. 
but it's fun. Um, point wise, um, I'm thinking like six. Uh, six seems fair because that that early effect will be uh, pretty consistent, and people probably gravitate towards using that side really well. It it just it fits a lot of like Alpha Strike kind of lists that um, the First Order doesn't mind running. They don't hate it. Uh, and then Command <laughs> Commander Pyre. After placing forces, choose an enemy ship against two stress tokens. While you defend, if the attacker is stressed, you may reroll one at defense die. I don't think this one's going to be too good. However, if they do have uh, Phasma to work with as well. But that'd require running, like, two... Uh, wait, no, the uh, Upsilon carries three crew, right? Um, yes. Yeah, so I guess you could, like, put them both on there to, like, really try and uh, capitalize on Pyre, but I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal unless A-Wings become, like, the end-all, be-all meta. I was actually going to bring that up. I think this ability screws over the resistance really hard. I think, not really hard, it's, uh, you know, re-rolling one defense die isn't, like, it's good, but it's not um, Sloan level good, you know? Yeah, but when you do that to a uh, Upsilon shuttle, like you just get so much more health to choose through, chew through because you have to make so many more defense rolls. Yeah, yeah, it it really boosts the effectiveness of the Upsilon a lot, especially against resistance lists who we all know are going to just stress themselves out. You know, we're going to talk about Poe later, and it's just like, hey, or their ability seems to be let's throw out stress tokens and see how little that matters. And one crew member that makes those stress tokens matter more that says, hey, you can stress yourself out, but I get to mod my dice. Um, how much is Sloan? Eight points? Eight or nine for Sloan, right? You mean Phasma? Uh, no, no, I mean Sloan. I mean, to compare Pyre to Sloan. Uh, yeah, nine points. Uh, so Pyre is going to be four? Maybe five? Because Sloan is just better than Pyre. And rolling an attack die, like, I'd rather have every ship roll an attack die than have the crew carrier re-roll a defense die. So I, I don't think, like, Pyre could be, Pyre has to be, like, four or five... Maybe six if they think the ability is going to be too strong with the rest of First Order stuff, but that's highly unlikely considering the only thing they have really is um, is Phasma for giving stress. Yeah, I think five is going to be right because you got like uh, the Rebel Falcon with a reroll when you're evading, and that one's three, and that's an easier to football con condition. But it's also a title, so they're usually kind of cheap. So five sounds right. Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about the lat next or the HMP? Uh, we'll we'll go in on the lat. Okay. So the lat, we got uh, a new gunner and we got a new crew. I'll be honest with you, Clone Captain Rex is. I don't think he's any good. Uh no, just so much so much has to go right for Rex to be really good. First you have to spend uh, but, a focus. Yeah. Then you have to have friendly ships that have the defender in its bullseye, and then they gain a strain. Uh and then they perform a focus. So if you want that ability to work, they have to be ships that are lower initiative than than the ship carrying Captain Rex which means that they have a harder time, that they're low initiative, which means they have trouble getting the ship in bullseye. Yeah, somebody's going to be silly and try and put, like, Anakin in the Y-Wing, have Rex as a gunner, and then, like, have a bunch of ships trying to get bullseyes, but it's it's a meme. It, it's a meme, and it's not a very good one. It's just... And it's disappointing, because I think that, you know... Uh, unique gunners and crew are really where uh, these factions, uh, outside of the Separatist faction, which doesn't have uh, a lot of these slots, 
um, yet. This is really where uh, faction identity gets to be pushed. So to have Captain Rex, like, Cody isn't great, but I think he does push the faction identity. Yeah, like, Cody and Seventh Flea are, like, interesting options, at least. But Rex just doesn't seem like he's going to have a place anywhere. I'd probably put him at, like, two points, maybe three. Yeah, it's... It's not anything fancy. Two or three is probably correct. They're going to overcost him, for sure. I can, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to predict they're going to cost him at five. Um... But Yoda, on the other hand... Yeah, Yoda is just like, hey, let's just start breaking the rules of the game and start having some crazy dumbness going on. He's objectively a worse Palpatine. But I think Palpatine might be, like, the best Force crew in the game. Uh, well, that uh, Yoda's gonna be, like, probably, like, 17, 18 points. And he's just there to fuel your other Force users. Because that, that ability is going to be pretty interesting, and I think it's going to go well with the Ada 2 when we talk about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's definitely... They definitely designed it knowing the Ada 2 was coming. Um, because as it is... Uh, yeah, you can do it... Um, you can do it on the 7Bs. Oh, on the Delta 7s right now. Uh, you can't do it on Kid Anakin. That doesn't count. Uh, so. uh, yeah, it's only after doing purple maneuvers and purple actions, so they're, the barrel roll is just spend one to do a normal action. Yeah, and same with, same with you can't do it on fine-tuned controls. Uh, so it's a little bit, uh, it's a tiny bit, so you can only do it on the purple evade with the Delta 7s, which I guess is nice, but... Uh, the only one, only really the three force users ever purple evade. Um, I at least when I played the Delta Sevens. Um, yeah, maybe, I, think, maybe. I think the only time this crew sees play, it'll be like a like a double uh, two Adas and then like an arc one seventy might uh, to carry Yoda into battle. Well. Like so, Palp Aces is a list that I think FFG has always. They always want it to be good. Maybe not like they don't want it to be the best list in the game, but they want you. To, they want Empire players to feel confident knowing that they can slap Palpatine in a Lamba and grab two Aces. And I feel like they all they want Yoda Aces to be good as well. And I like that. I like I like the fact that there is an archetype that they're going here, and I think it's going to be. Anakin Obi Wan. I don't know what. Oh, yeah, if, oh, if, if, they're if, pushing if, Obi hard with the Eta Two. Yeah, is it gonna be Eta Two Anakin Obi Wan, or is it gonna be uh, Delta Anakin and you know? Uh, it could be Delta Anakin, but only if Delta's cheaper uh, points wise. I think it's more likely going to be Delta Obi Wan than Eta Obi Wan if if they're in different ships. Um. Uh, I think the Obi Wan ability is so much better, though. In Edda? Or the Edda, yeah. I don't actually. We'll we'll get that when we get to the Edda. Um, so yeah, there's that's a, a little bit more in the gunship. Um, I don't really think there's much more to talk about. We know Ayla Secura. We know that um, Kit Fisto. We know that Plo Koon are all uh, crew members. So we're getting four Jedi crew in that pack. Uh, Ghost Company is good, question mark. Um, Rebel players would kill for Ghost Company. Every uh, fucking Resistance would kill for it, too, with their Falcon. It's just a good, it's a really good ability. Um, there's Missiles. The Dial is garbage. Um, so, maybe don't stress yourself out. Yeah, it might, uh, it might wind up like, if you run munitions on it, they'll probably want to run that uh, 180 arc missile that's going to be coming out with it in the HMB. Oh, yeah. It's... You you take the, the 180 arc missile, you keep the um, the turrets pointed firm, squarely out the left and right, and you're just... You got a really good... You got a really good cover, time on target. 
your actual like damage output isn't high but that's what you want in a support gunship you don't really care if you're you don't want to your goal is not to destroy the enemy ship it's to make the enemy ship feel unsafe yeah uh although thinking back on yoda they might uh he might wind up seeing play in a non uh jedi list it might just get slapped into a uh, wolf in the arc 170 and then just they'll pretend it has no abilities other than two force at 18 or at 16 to 18 no at 11 to 14 yes maybe it depends what he's costed at. Yeah, but Wolf's enough of a brawler that having those extra t effective t calculate tokens it could be a big deal for him. Maybe. Um, let's see. Uh, and then we're at the gunship. All we got out of the gunship... It's like, there's so much cool shit that I want to know about the gunship. I want to know uh, what its variants are. I want to know... I want to know what munitions it has. Yeah, because you know it's going to be like the Hyena, where it has a bunch of weird different configurations. But the, uh, the well, speaking of configurations, the thing we got spoiled on was the uh, Repulsor Lift Stabilizer, and that's that's going to cause some salt right off the bat, I'm sure. Well, so, like, looking at the spread, it's got cannons, it's got missiles. Can everyone bring both? Because I don't think so. Some are going to be able to bring one, some are going to bring the other. That's just the design space uh, that they like. Yeah. like probably be able to bring both the uh, kind of like the hyenas bring both but the the specialized version as well okay uh and then there's a new device as well kind of like a longer type more of a missile bomb thing um but so but they decided that they were going to spoil the repulsor lifts i think they're really cool because i think that there's a lot of um agency on both sides it's such a powerful movement tool but you have to telegraph it so much i do think it's going to make it a uh, really really hard to deal with in that like it's just you're not going to be able to outmaneuver it nearly as easily it's not going to be very easy to bomb uh because when you have that side slip maneuver, you have so many more unusual positions to end up in, and you just don't always have the maneuverability to really deal with that kind of setup. So you, you are aware the, of the limitations of the side slip, right? Yeah, uh, you're only going to be getting it every other turn. You can only effectively move forward, and uh, you're still kind of going in that same direction that you would be able you also don't, um, you don't slide it like a talent roll. Yeah, yeah, it's just middle to middle. Um, so, yeah, so yeah, but, you have yeah, to have the thing it. that you can do is going to get you, like, super wide on the field, and most people can't, like, go that far. So that's going to turn those banks into surprisingly powerful maneuvers for a droid. But there is the interesting part where, because... This is, it is a droid that needs, that likes pl flying with other droids. The amount of galaxy brain of when can I side slip and still get within the right range from my droid buddies, it's going to be a very difficult ship to fly. You're going to, there's going to, if you screw it up and you just bank it and now you're flying a drift in space and your vultures and bombers are, you know, an entire three bank away from you. You're going to go down. Well, it doesn't have network calculations. It has network clock, which uh, is, uh, yeah, something yeah. That doesn't require a range. Yeah, they're, they're more independent than the regular vultures and hyenas, so it's going to be it's going to be tough to really get a whole lot of uh, synergy going. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think, looking, just looking at the spread right now and see if there's anything that strikes me out as interesting besides the multi-missile pods. Uh, there's a new bomb. It has three charges. I think there's a new cannon. I can't tell if that's just the ion cannon being covered by the card. Uh, uh, but ultimately, I think it's ultimately, a new cannon, yeah. Ultimately, it doesn't matter because I already... I, 
I'll need to check the type root, which is next, because uh, I know the type root for a fact has a new canon. Yes, it does. Um, let's see. Dial, it's got the standard droid dial, but worse. Uh, it, its banks are red, except for the two bank. It's four straight. Which four straight? What? The, the, the two bank being white is standard. Yeah, yeah, but it has to do... So that's its only white um, bank side slip. That'll be kind of enough for it, though, because yeah. that's that's or like you're kicking out so far, it's not going to be easy to bump them or anything. But you're that's gonna get a new angle and all that. It's and plus you threaten a lot with the uh, like the three hard or two hard or whatever uh, whatever its biggest hard is as well. Three hard. But that's what I mean when I say that um, it has like such a. There's, it's such a powerful maneuver, but they've really done a good job of making it um, less unpredictable. Yeah, they, they definitely did a good job of making it so that the side slip maneuver isn't going to be like this major, like, what the heck do I do against this kind of thing? Like, it's not as squirrely as, uh, as like a slave one boba where he just goes wherever you feel like or uh, three where who knows what position you end up in it's you get an idea of what's going to happen but it's still a still a scary move to be able to put out okay so uh the last thing it has reload to calculate do you think there's going to be a disarm synergy on the chassis uh probably not it's just uh that ship is going to have uh some defense problems because it doesn't have the network to uh, calculates so that uh that being being able to give yourself at least one mod for the turn is probably just going to be more of a defense measure okay okay you don't think there's going to be like a one of the one of the like you can only take one of one of the limited pilots droid programs is going to be like, like uh, that might be a thing, but I kind of hope not because those things tend to not get played unless you're vendor. Yeah, but vendors like they're built around being able to not be disarmed. So it's like this doesn't have any indication that the entire chassis is based around disarming itself. I'm just thinking like one one offshoot ship is like, hey, uh, you can uh, after you take a disarm token, you can pass it to an allied ship. So you can keep yeah. firing your missiles. It might be a thing, but I if uh, if they were going to explore that space, it'd probably just be uh, based on uh, deplete tokens instead, because that's that's kind of the direction that FFG has been pushing lately with like the Tyvarian and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, okay. So now we're all going into wave eight. Uh, we're going to the tie heavy, the, the brute, the big boy. Um, it's a medium base ship. Empire has three, I believe. Well, this will be their third. They have the Punisher. They have the Reaper. And now they have the heavy. Uh, first, the model, it looks pretty generic, uh, but it does articulate, so that's a plus. Yeah, I'm excited for the articulation on the on the turret, uh, but otherwise it's just an upscale next wing. TIE fighter. TIE fighter. Um, looking at it, the thing that I found... Uh, so I was talking to some a friend of mine, because I, I joked that Empire got a new ship. It was in six frames of the Solo movie. Uh, I don't know how true that is. I don't know how many frames it's on screen in the solo movie. Um, but it was like, it's so not important, but mechanically, it's so easy to make it meaningful. Yeah, I mean, we're looking at what's basically a tankier version of the Thai SF. Uh, it's just not as good at flipping its uh turret around as much it doesn't have all those linked actions like the sf does 
and it, but it gets the configuration it has the droid it has the cannons like it has a lot of things that are easy for ffg to do mechanically and make them fun and it gets to, it gets to fill a spot a niche that the empire hasn't filled yeah and uh that configuration they showed off is pretty spicy and i really like it uh having it like increase your or decrease the maneuver or decrease the difficulty of your uh, free straight and free bank so it can go really it can book yeah it gets it gets um i believe it gets blue three banks and three straights yeah and then it gets calculate on its bar but i think both configurations are going to give it calculate on its bar and it gets oh. uh barrel roll into calculate which is but do you think the other configuration is going to have a different link? Uh, it might be a more offensive setup, so it might be like blocking to calculate or something crazy like okay. that. So you're right. also you're also making the assumption that the other configuration is something beefier, more offensive oriented. Yeah, like I think there will be a speed or a speed configuration, and then like a just kind of like a uh, a slower, just kind of a shoot things kind of configuration okay looking at it now by the way i will confirm that the cannon in the spread for the gunship is the same cannon unknown cannon in the spread for the heavy nice all right it's three attack dice front arc range two to three it's definitely got text on it but we've got no idea what it is it's just going to be a bit rules heavy yeah um so also in the spread there's a talent that's going to be in the we'll talk about when we get to uh the slave one it's got a tie upgrade yeah and tie um, upgrade we might even say for just talking about the b-wing because... we get the full we get the full card with the b-wing so we'll save it for there Two copies of Snapshot, so um, Empire players I who... I not get his points increased, so I actually get to still fly my stupid uh, Sorisu squad. Oh, God. Uh, but so Empire players who haven't bought the munitions pack might be a little bit happier. Or they can get some extra copies of Snapshot. Yeah, I'm glad they've, uh, they've started just kind of chucking them out in a bunch of things. Although I like the card pack, it's just... It's nice that the cards are starting to get pro proliferated into new new packs and everything. Only two, only two named pilots. Um, Rampage is going to be the first one. So I'll say that I don't think Rampage is going to see play, but I don't think that they, I don't think that they intended him to be see play. If we're if we're, if we're gonna take a look. Yeah, uh, I think Rampage is okay. If we're gonna take a little diversion. You really have to go with that spoiled configuration pretty decently. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if we're gonna go into um, this a little diversion here, that there are that there's a wide variety of pilots that FFG make. Some of them they're like, we want this pilot to be competitive. Some of them we want this pilot to be interesting enough that people like to experiment with him, and people who are a fan of him play him. Yeah, you have your you have your uh, just generically good. You have your uh, build arounds, and then there's just ones that are like maybe this will be useful someday. Maybe kind of uh, I don't know. Like DBS four hundred four is a good example. Is he gonna be good? Yeah. Uh, no, I think he was. Uh, he was supposed to be a build around, but it's just nothing worked out with DBS four hundred four. At least not yet. But the chassis itself, the, the tie heavy chassis itself, I think is like two or three generics, like two generics in a list that just provides some, like, some firepower. It's only a two die red ship, though, so it's kind of... I, I don't think we'll see too much of it. It'll probably be around, like, 35 points apiece, so it'll it'll kind of be a Y-Wing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a Y-Wing type. It's a... This exists to put shit on it, and whenever you have a ship that this exists to put shit on it, uh, picking a a named pilot with an ability that ability has to be good. Yeah, because like you have to be like Dutch or something or uh, broadside. Broad 
or matchstick now that uh now that the V19s are back in hyperspace. Oh yeah. I like how FFG didn't reduce the price of broadside and matchstick. They're like, "We know. We know these are good." They knew what they were doing. Yeah. Uh, I would have loved the price reductions. No one else would have. Um So the other pilot uh is I, I think I saw his name dropped on some thread, like he's he's in a comic or something. It starts with an L. It's like lift in something. I three. Uh from what I can see, while a friendly ship does something, may perform uh, an attack. Uh... If you are in the defenders, is that side arcs? I've got it right here. It says, while a friendly ship at range 0 to 2 maybe performs an attack, if you're in the defender's uh, side arc, the attacker can re-roll an attack die. I think that's so I guess good. Be like, kind that's of like good. a flanking fire assist. I think that's good. Also, you are right. It is. I, I, look, I just looked to the right, and in the, the model with the base, the cardboard base, you can see lift and D. You can see the name. Um, maybe it's light and D. I can't tell if that's a T or uh, light M L Y T H A M. Okay, lighten, 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 lightham. I hate that lifeham. Her name's their kid lifeham. Uh, well, uh, I've got uh, something to say about names when we get to the V wing because uh, I found out somebody has a name that's really just dumb. This is why he goes by Grand Moff. Even, even, even on that, base. I like that you knew exactly who I was talking about. We only know one name. Um. So yeah, I think that's all I want to talk uh, about for the brood. Oddballs in one of them. I think that's, that's his tradition. I think that's it for the brood, though. Unless there, you want to bring up anything else. Uh, let's see, uh, looks like, uh, one of the cards in the pack is gonna be Deadeye Shot. I said, uh, when I, was you gonna bring that up. I was gonna bring that up when we got to the Slave. Oh, okay, fair enough. You can see the full card. Okay, so, up next is, uh, Heralds of Hope. Uh, I... So according to the leaks... There's supposed to be at least two more of these packs, right? Uh, I think there's. I think it's just one more. I'm not sure though. Some. I feel like. I, so Phoenix. We're, we both know Phoenix Cell, right? Uh, not off the top of my head. So like, it's it's Phoenix Cell. I thought I've read Phoenix uh, Cell, and then like Sky Strike Academy, which I presume to be Empire. All right, yeah, I don't think I saw that particular spoiler, but, I mean, it makes sense that they'd be releasing new packs for uh, for, for pretty much every faction, and they'd probably want to release uh, Rebels and, uh, and just the things that aren't getting a whole lot this way. Yeah, I think it's all, but Heralds of Hope is a really cool way for new players to get into the game. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it doesn't... Uh, doesn't cover all the bases, kind of like how we both got into uh, Republic and Separatists and kind of had to find some tokens and <laughs> find yeah. all this and that to kind of... Yeah. Uh, it's easier now, because you can buy the damage deck, you can buy the templates, you can buy the dice, you can buy the obstacles. Yeah, the uh, the damage deck was definitely the, uh, the big restrictive one, because we just got the plastic templates from, like, Etsy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, the description of the pack says it has 25 upgrade cards, which I think is a really good number. It has a lot of base upgrades. Um, I don't know resistance upgrades off the top of my head, so I can't tell if, in the spread, I can't tell if the astromechs are new. I don't know the art for the resistance astromechs. Uh, obviously, the middle one is R4, but there's one above it and one below it that could be new or could be not. Um, there's Dead Eye Shot, there's Daredevil, there's Black One, um, Prime Thrusters, Ferrisphere Paint, Snapshot, Ion Missiles, Ion Cannon. 
Yeah, I think it's a couple new, uh, a couple new pilots and like a couple new. I don't necessarily want to say talent, but just like a couple, couple new upgrades. But I don't know if any of them are astromechs. Yeah, I just there's there's art. I don't know. I can't tell the difference. Um, so there's we know two new XT seventy pilots, and there's well, there's one. They have. Yeah, there's either two or three new A-Wing pilots. Like, there could be two or three new A-Wing pilots. And it's like, stop giving the ship pilots. Right? Yeah, like, like, uh, but we we know one of the A-Wings. Uh, yeah. Like, full card, but the others are a uh, mystery. So, if we're, if we're just going to talk about Merle Cobbin now, I I love his ability, because I love I love his I-1. It's, it's, it hits that balance of it's a powerful ability, if this if Merle Cuppin was any higher initiative, I would say he's absolutely broken. Yeah, but as it is, this boy's seeing no play. <laughs> he might he's he is good enough. He is such a good ability that I don't think he makes the cut in a five A wing list, but I think people bring him for fun. Oh well everybody brings can bring pretty much anything for fun, but uh when it comes to like like, what purpose are you using this guy for? And that's, uh, like, you can only really guarantee it, the, the bullseye, if you're going to use him as a blocker. And then you could just use a generic with, like, Intimidate or something like that. So I don't think it's going to be all that big of a deal. It's a good ability. Uh, I, I don't know the price of the A1, of the RZ2 I1 off the top of my head, so I don't want to make a guess what Merle Cobbin is. Uh, I assume he's going to be, so like the top is 43, and then they're sort of, they sort of hover between like 30 and 32. And that's, that's where he needs to be. He needs to be like, he needs to be between 30, he needs to be 33 at the highest, maybe 32. Um, and then you got, you know, two new T-70s. Uh, Temin Wexley is the one where I'm just like, I don't like him. Uh, let's see, uh, I kind of like the ability, uh, but it's definitely something that you build kind of like a generic swarm. It's not really something that you're going to be using in like a more like a more tightly set up like uh, like a like you're not going to run it against uh, along with uh, Poe, you know. Yeah, there's so much. I guess there's just so much competition in the in this in the chassis. Yeah, yeah. The A wing and the X wing both have that problem. Uh, it takes something kind of special to kind of disrupt the meta of what you're taking. With uh, with those two ships, and but I do like Nupo. Nupo, I'm kind of kind of not really caring too much about. I think most people are going to run the stand or the the original one more. Uh, however, I do see a place for the Nupo Dameron. It's just it's just not the not going to be used the same way or. It can't be used the same way as the original, because the original's better as an ace than this one. Yeah, definitely a much better ace. And I'm pretty sure they're going to be, like, basically the same amount of points. Yeah, yeah. I said I said 80 when I messaged you about it, but that's because I completely misread the ability. I thought it only cost one charge to do his, act, to do his ability, not two. Oh god, that would be freaking crazy. Yeah, that's how I first read it, so I'm like, this pose insane! He's the best ship ever! He's 80 points! But no, he's um, he's going to be uh, standard Poe, most likely because it's 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 great. You can do it to anyone. You can only do it once every two turns, and that really makes him all less powerful. Yeah, and, uh, it, it's only an I six coordinate on himself, and that's what his default ability is. So you're taking it to be able to do it to other people. And most of the time, the mo more valuable target is going to be Poe himself. So it's kind of, kind of a moot point. Yeah. Um, However, uh, I'm guessing that they uh, they'll probably leave this one in hyperspace and then put the uh, the full ace in extended and just kind of mess with the meta that way. 
okay yeah i like that i like i, I definitely like that and i didn't consider it um we have three upgrades to look in to look at the first is going to be starboard slash um the fact that a wings have two talent slots makes this uh really good the fact that um rz ones um suck makes this talent not good on them it f it just is so if it's so good on rz2s yeah it might as well just say rz2 uh, and that's really unfortunate the ability to fly through a ship put your turret back at them and basically have outmaneuver is really powerful yeah and there's a there's a similar talent to this for the uh for the tri fighter that we'll get to but this one's i i think this one's the better version it actually the, the one it isn't for the tri fighter it says smaller medium ship uh what was that uh it doesn't say tri fighter it says smaller medium ship Oh, I, I guess it just comes in the tri fighter pack then. Yep. Uh, I I was surprised by that too. I when I was gathering up all the all the images and stuff, I was like, wait a minute, I remember that being tri fighter remember... only. Yeah, I just I'm just surprised that it was a talent in the tri fighter uh, setup anyway. In like to begin with, like, what? Um. So starboard's. I think it's gonna be. Uh. I, it depends on how much it is, but I feel like. It will see play in uh, because it's good and the RZ2s are good. It's not, it's not good yeah, enough. I, I think not. it's going to be a bit restrictive in points cost, though. It'll probably be like six to eight points somewhere in there. Like it'll have to be kind of priced in that like juke range. But resistance runs. They they can run a greedy list. They can run a list that's like uh, where they put they stack some points onto an A wing. On ZZ Slow, especially? Yeah, no, they, they definitely have the ability to run it, but it will be, uh, it'll have to be aggressively costed, or it'll have to be conservatively costed in order to keep it from just being something that you glue on, like heroic. Yeah. Um, but it's not good enough to make the RZ1 C play. No, unfortunately, and that's, that's a shame. They, the fact that it says a wing, but you really only put it on the RZ two is a real bummer. You didn't you didn't watch the live stream, right? Uh, no, I was at work at the time. Yeah, uh, uh, there were a lot of Twitch comments that were just justice for the RZ one. Yeah, people people want to get Arvel on the field and run into some star destroyers, and I don't blame them. So we got overdrive thruster. And I, I admit, I, I didn't do my, my due diligence. I was going, intending to look up how one performs a red slam action on the T-70, and I just couldn't find it. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's buried in something called a black one. But that's a white. And you can't, oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the black one is a white slam, and you can only slam in your perform action step. So how do you make a how do you make a perform action step action red, and that is white? Because I they wrote while you perform a red boost bear roll or slam, but there isn't a way for that chassis to do that just yet. I don't think that I'm aware of. Uh, uh probably not then. Uh, yeah. So it might just be uh, that we like we can only really talk about the boost and the barrel roll at the moment. Yeah, so a lot of ways to do red barrels and boosts. However, the most fun way we both know is Daredevil. And that's the one that's all I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna talk about hard two barrel uh boosts. Because I think that's hilarious. Yeah, it it's hilarious. I don't think it'll see too much play, uh, because I don't think the uh the one speed up is going to be too big of a deal on too many of these. Uh, however, I could see it being used on Poe, because he can just choose when he does a red booster barrel roll. Yeah, it definitely is good on Poe. It could be good on, um, Nyanum. Outside of that, though, yeah, whatever. But it's fun, and I like it. I like I movement like options. It, definitely. Just being able to just toss yourself across the board is always fun. Being able to do a boost that's a too hard that that's any basic two to be able to do a two straight barrel roll that's just 
it's really cool and it makes Poe Ace Poe really slippery. Yeah, definitely. It's it's gonna be uh, really interesting to see in action. Um, and then we got one more. It's probably the weakest of the three. Uh, underslung blaster cannon. Did you end up catching this? Uh, yes, I did. Although, real quick, uh, the integrated S foils does have focus to red barrel roll, so every every X wing does have the ability to at least a red barrel roll on demand. Cool, cool. I wasn't even aware. I forgot about that. Thank you. But yeah, so the underslung cannon, uh, snapshot on a turret, but only range one. And only two dice, and you have to be target locked. Yeah, it's... I'm pretty sure it sees no play. But I don't hate it like I hate Rex. <laughs> Fair. Because it's just like, it's this cool thematic thing that's like, yeah, it, it fits. It's supposed to be this um, computerized, uh, it, like, you know, it protects you from little things going around. The only thing yeah, I, I mean, say- if it's cheap enough, people will probably take it as, like, a filler. Yeah. Because bonus attacks are always fun. Yeah, I can see that. And, you know, being able to, like, hey, you're behind me, I still get to shoot you, even if it is such a terrible attack. Uh, I got the V-Wing up next. Uh, something that people did bring up that's interesting about the Undersung Blaster Cannon, though, is, uh... The requirements on it are resistance and X-wing. It doesn't specify T-70 X-wing, so we're uh, so there's some speculation that it's coming out with the T-85 at some point. I'm real honest with you. I don't want the T-85. I mean, it's something that will probably like. I don't expect it to be the next thing to come out, but it's probably going to come out at some point because. FFG wants to print little plastic ships to get more money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so let's go to the viewing. Um, the first thing that stuck out to me is Oddball. So it's got Tie uh, Fighter. Not a Oddball, but an Oddball that might actually maybe kind of have a chance at seeing some play. And then they ruin it by printing another I five. Well, uh, can't win them all. Can't win them all. Um, so this, it's got, uh, two generics, three named pilots, a three, four, and two fives, which is honestly, like, does that spread of named pilots exist where, the, where it's got two fives and then a three and a four? Probably not. It's really interesting to see. Uh, it has an astromech slot, a configuration slot, a mod slot, a talent slot, and then it can get a bomb slot with one of its um, things. I think, in fact, that there are two TIE Fighter upgrades in this pack. Uh, yeah, I did some uh, some eagle-eyeing back before the streams happened. So uh, I actually do have uh, some of the abilities on, uh, on the uh, two obscured pilots. It looks like the I-5 is a defensive ability that turns enemy eyeballs to blanks. Uh, however, it's something that's re- dependent on the revealed maneuvers. So it might be kind of like a Naboo Starfighter situation. Okay. And okay. Then for the I-4, uh, it's something that prevents or grants range bonuses. <laughs> and it looks like it has energy charges. Cool. Um, oddball same ability. We'll talk about Tarkin in a minute. So in the spread of upgrades, there is a new astromech with a charge system, a new astromech without a charge system, uh, an ability with the last word engines that has two ties, and it has a tie fighter in the picture. So that's probably a tie fighter upgrade. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's just called twin ion engines, but that may be, uh, Maybe speculation from the spoiler list that I have. Yeah, yeah. And then it has uh, Ion Limiter Overdrive. 
I'm not calling it override. I read it as overdrive the first time, and I'm like, it's it's overdrive now. And so it was misread, so it shall be. Yes. Uh, the dial is... The dial's pretty decent. It can't go slow, but it's got blue hearts, and that's that's not small potatoes. It is not small potatoes. It has a two it has a 2k and a 4k though which is interesting interesting to maneuver uh two turnarounds yes it'll basically only ever be the four though because nobody really 2ks when uh because there's rarely ever space to do that when you're trying to do a turnaround it's nice to have though Uh, it has thermal detonators, which we know nothing about, other than, um, I think, in my opinion, thermal detonators are gonna, you can drop more than one around. Uh, probably, it'll probably be something like a cluster bomb kind of setup. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's got four charges, so it's, it's definitely gotta be something where you can expend multiple for some reason. And it has four bombs in the, like, you, you get four physical copies of the bomb. Uh, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to the configuration first because it doesn't naturally have a bomb slot, but it gets the Alpha Three B, which gives it an, it basically advanced optics, but for target locks. And that's pretty good considering that it has a linked action, which is barrel roll to uh, to lock, which traditionally has been a pretty shit linked action. Uh, so. Uh, so having a configuration that makes it okay is not too bad. Yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting. They want it to be. It means it's going to be less defensive than an A wing, um, but it has but target lock into uh, target lock into this is is kind of cool. Even if it's only primary attack, having advanced optics. I don't have the math on hand of like how consistent that makes it, but. It's better than FCS, I think. Uh. Oh wait, you have wait. to spend the lock, so never mind. It's. Yeah, the the having to spend it is the is the problem. Uh, I would say it's probably only going to be used if it uh if it creates a juicy attack. Otherwise, the reroll is going to be better. Uh, but with the native two die, it's probably uh. It's probably not going to be a big deal to see this on the table. Then the other, the, the other configuration, what's your prediction? Uh, I'm not sure on that. It's kind of, it's kind of hard to say. Yeah, the spread doesn't really give you any indicators of what it could be at all. Um... It looks to be a ship that likes target locking, so I don't think they're going to stray from that. I think, it, my opinion, it's going to be a more defensive-oriented, but still involving a target lock. Uh, you know what? I think it's going to be like a like a missile setup. Uh, maybe it'll give it, like, reload or something? I don't know. Okay. Okay. Again, we're going off nothing here, so we both could be wrong, or one of us could be right. Yeah, just raw speculation. But that's that's kind of the fun of these uh these situations. So uh if you do want to read Tarkin's name. Because you mentioned how much you hated it. Mother flippin' Wilhuff Tarkin. Yeah. Uh I think this is the first this is gonna be the only maybe non clone pilot in a clone ship. Wait, never mind. I I'm dumb. Uh, Anakin and R2-D2 both exist in the Y-Wing. Yeah, and, uh, and the generics, uh, like, may or may not be, uh, particularly, uh, necessarily clones either. Are you, so, the, are you assuming are you, that the I-2... Uh, the ship's kind of set up to be, like, the in-between ship from the Republic to the Empire. So it's kind of got a little bit of flavor from both. Are you assuming that the the first word in the I two generic is loyalist? Uh, yes. Okay. That and uh, when I was eagle eyeing, I spied that there was a uh, 
there was a card in there. Uh, let me pull up the name that I saw. Oh, no, sorry. That was in the, uh, the ADA, so I'll talk about it then. Okay. But it's an interesting card. It's just not going to be a big deal. In, uh, it's an epic card. Yeah. Um, so, Will Health Tarkin, during the system phase, you may choose an object that you have lock at range 1 to 3. Another friendly ship at range 1 to 3 may acquire lock on that object. Um, it's an interesting <laughs> ability. However, he's I-3, so... It's... It's a Republic Dutch, however, uh, where Dutch gives you immediate benefit, but you have to keep locking. Uh, Will Huff's going to be... God damn it. <laughs> He's going to be locking something and then trying to get continuous value out of it, uh, which is going to be nice for certain types of ships. Uh, and it's nice because he doesn't necessarily have to lock every turn. It's just you have to, you have to get in there, you have to lock, and then you have to start playing safe. I do think it's funny that the... So the V-19 comes out with the Delta-7, and it's advertised as, like, oh, it flies with the Delta-7 uh, and provides utility and, like, a, is a cheap chassis that can um, wingman for the Delta-7s. And then one look at the dial, and you're like, no, it, it, that's not true at all. Yeah, at, at least the V-Wing is going to be able to keep up with, uh, with the Aces a lot better. It's a it's a two die ship, uh, two red die ship. So it isn't going to be very expensive. Uh, it's no, uh, I'm thinking the the uh, I two generics probably going to be like twenty eight, twenty nine points because it's just a it's just a very uh, simple like tie ish kind of chassis. It's a worse it's tie it have an effect on it. Yeah, like you have to pay for its actual chassis ability. Yeah, it's a worse um, uh, tie advanced V one. Uh, I would compare it to, uh, I'd probably compare it to an M3A, but with a better dial and better action bar. Better health? Uh, no, it's got the same health as a, as an M3A. Oh, M3A. Two I thought M3As were three and one. Oh, shit, you're right. Yeah. So that's why I'm comparing it to the TIE Advanced V1, because it also has the same health. The the V1s I always think of being, like, inherently uh, set up to be Force users, even though they have the Baron of the Empire. It went down to 28 points in the last update. Yeah, and I still don't... Like, they'll, people will experiment with it, but I don't think it'll quite be, uh, quite be effective. Yeah. So, but that's all I want to talk about for the V-Wing. I'm kind of done with this ship. It's, it's, I predict it's going to be good, but it's not, you're, it's going to be like, it's filler. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be upgrade dependent on, uh, on whether or not it sees, like, a lot of play or if it just sees kind of, like, casual play. But, like, filler is kind of the clone, the Republic sort of, like, flavor. <laughs> just a lot of filler between aces. Yeah. Okay. So goodbye, Will Health. Will Health. Will Health. Fuck that. Uh. uh so we're at the actual ship that matters. We had a two. Um. It's got five named pilots and a generic. Um, the generic is I-4 instead of I-3. Probably still one force. Um, the, the Jedi are Anakin, Obi-Wan, Ayla, Shakti, and then people think Yoda. Yeah, and, uh, I have, I was able to eagle-eye this one as well. I've got abilities for, uh, for, looks like everybody, actually, uh, yeah, I think I've got the ability on everybody aside from the generic, which won't have an ability. So let's go into... Start with Obi-Wan, read his ability. So uh, it's the... Essentially, him and Anakin have the uh, similar setup to their ability. Uh, it's 
when you can fully execute a maneuver or when the one that's like Anakin or Obi-Wan can both trigger the ability. Uh, when you fully execute, as long as you have more enemies than you do friendlies in uh, within range one, then uh, Anakin can spend a force to remove a red token. Obi-Wan's ability will allow you to spend a force to get a focus token out of it. Okay. Um, so, I I will say, the th- two things I'm going to say are, you you made one mistake. It's not fully executed maneuver. I know this is a Republic, and that's something that, like, is going to be surprising, but they actually get to do their ability. All it says is execute a maneuver. Uh, fully execute is just such a such a usually default thing that I'm surprised that they didn't stick with it. Maybe Obi-Wan says fully. Maybe. But Anakin does not. Anakin says execute. Uh, and I know we talked about... Um, when we talked about Yoda, we talked about Anakin and Obi Wan, and then they're the power duo. Um, we need a better name for that. I've been calling them Danger Twins for now, but yeah, it's it's definitely going to need, but it's going to have a proper name at some point. Yeah, well, we'll have to work on it. Um, the reason that I think Anakin is more likely going to be, if this is a bold if, if they aren't both in Edda's. The reason that I think it's going to be Anakin more likely is because Obi-Wan has a support ability in the Delta 7. Anakin doesn't. Anakin's Delta 7 ability only affects himself. Obi-Wan's ability, while stronger in the Edda, he also has a good ability in the Delta. Yeah, I don't think the Anakin support ability is going to be all that... like. I don't think it's going to be uh, all that big of a deal because you're not going to do too many red actions in the Ada. So it's just going to be more of a... Uh, so keeping the, the Ada be on uh, Obi would probably be better because I think his ability is just better than the Aether Sprite version. It is. It is a better ability. Uh, I wonder if you're ever going to see um, Y-Wing. Not Y-Wing. Uh, Nebu Starfighter Anakin with Obi-Wan. Uh, only as a meme. Only as a meme? Definitely not in the, in, I think in a four-ship list, not a three-ship list. Yeah, uh, cause Anakin in the, in the Naboo Starfighter just doesn't have a whole lot of ways to, uh, to trigger the Obi-Wan ability. So it's, it's just not a good pair to begin with. Yeah, and the, and all the other disadvantages just completely outweigh the other potentials. However, I do think uh, Anakin and a Y-Wing and Ada 2 Obi could be a thing. Yeah. yeah, I would say that. Probably with another I-5 Ace. Maybe. maybe. Yeah, maybe. just maybe. set it up to sort of uh, just do like the pure alpha strike uh, Anakin and just have him get full double mod right off the bat. Um, Ada Secura, though. What's what's her ability? While an enemy ship in your bullseye probably performs an attack, if the defender is friendly and at range zero to two, the defender can choose one or change a blank into an eyeball. That's just good. I think that's really good. Yeah, it's just a good, solid defensive ability. I think you're taking her more for the initiative than anything else, but it's definitely playable. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, I-4? Shock T, I believe? Not many S S Jedi. Like, at the start of the blank... Uh, at the starting movement phase, you can spend any number of force uh, and choose that many number of friendly ships within a certain range. I think it's zero to two, maybe zero to three. Uh, but I don't see what they do. It's just at the end of the turn, they don't remove something. 
It might be, I'm thinking focus tokens. That's... So it's essentially Kraken, but for focus tokens, and you have to spend force to get it to go off. I think that's still, if the ship's cheap enough, that's still really good in, like, an alpha strike list. Yeah, uh, it definitely makes them, uh, gives them a really, uh, really interesting joust capability. Uh, but I, it's probably going to be too expensive for that. And then after you've blown your load, I think it's just going to kind of turn into a generic that doesn't do anything interesting for the rest of the game because it's an I-4. What about three Bravo Squadron pilots with passive sensors and torpedoes? Is that a meme? Is that, is that, is that, does that reach meme status with Shock T or is that just bad? Uh, no, that, that, I think that'd be like a perfectly fine jousting list. But it'd be uh, it'd be a bit on the fragile side because uh, if once you lose your or once the joust is over, you really gotta hope that you won. <laughs> yeah. Uh, plus, she also only has like she also is only gonna have like two force anyway. So. Oh yeah, that's a distinct possibility. However, there is the uh, the upgrade that could very well keep her at that cap, no problem. Uh, let's go for Yoda first, and then we can go into. Oh, to go Yoda, then we'll go dial and ship ability, then we'll go upgrades. All right, so uh, Yoda, uh, from what I can read and a little bit of filling in on my own, it looks like after a friendly ship at a certain amount of range spends one or more force to do a thing. Uh, or yeah, after after a friendly ship spends one or more force. Uh, it looks like you can spend force to... Essentially, it's his crew card, but on a ship. Okay. Okay. Um, like, just an I-3 force battery running around, and he'll probably be, like, 3 force. Uh, maybe they'll be absolutely freaking mad lads and make it a 4-4 a, a four, four ship just to mess with us. That, I, I know that I've seen that around, and people... It's interesting to think about. Um, so the ship ability, uh, it's, I don't even want to, like, I know I don't want to talk about it, but if people are really interested in this ship, I think that they should watch the live stream when they talk about, because they really talk about what makes the Edit 2 different from the Delta 7. What makes it different is that it's freaking force hungry as all get out. What I mean is, like... Um, what they designed the Delta Seven knowing full well they were going to have to do the Edit Two, and so they had to make the decision of how do we make two Jedi carrying a ships feel different to play, and part of that is the Edit Two. You know, it it gets its minute reposition in the system phase, which means it's very hard to it's harder to block. But once you once you've entered the maneuver phase, it's much less squirrely. Yeah, it's definitely uh, it's definitely not as crazy as supernatural reflexes. Uh, it's it's just kind of odd. Like I think it'll uh, it'll kind of have the same position as like Anakin's Naboo ability, where it's uh, effectively done at a low in enough initiative that it's not something that you have to plan super hard against. But if you do it, uh, if you do it in the right situation at the right time, it can really change the tide of a battle. And it's white. It's got a white evade. Yeah, and then a purple target lock of all things. So, uh, and I understand why they did it. It's just kind of like crazy to see something seemingly basic like a lock be purple, which may very well be fixable. Does it have a modification slot? Not that I'm aware of. All right, then, yeah, uh, yeah, they probably left it out just to keep them from getting targeting computer then. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, that would do it, wouldn't it? Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that'd be, uh, that'd be a little bit uh, defeating the point of the purple target box. There is some world where this is the most unfun ship in the fucking game. Uh, actually, wait, never mind. I was about to say unfun ship in the game. It doesn't have a shield, never mind. Yeah, I and was gonna say, uh, I was gonna say, and we've already seen some fun ship in the game, and unfortunately for me, it was the Nantex. 
Uh, what I mean by unfun is, uh, it's, it's worse, um, R2 Jedi. It has the potential to be, but not really because it doesn't have shields, uh, where it does its damage, it gets up in points, and then it flies away with a regenerating shields, three green dice, three force, and an evade token. Yeah, uh... Like, even if you could get a shield, like, one shield on it, like, if they somehow decided to give it a mod slot, and then you put in R2 so that you could recover the shield, the uh, the odd hole value means that you wouldn't be able to bring it above the half point threshold with just recharging a shield, because it'd either be uh, one hole, one shield, or it'd be two hole uh, left already, which would already not be half points, so... yeah, yeah. It's immune to the R2 stupidity. Which is really good. I like saying that, because I hate the R2 stupidity. And it's my favorite faction, and I've never flown R2 Jedi. Um, uh, I, I thought you did it once, I... just to try it out and get a feel for it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. But, you know, when Sutton does well, you got to fly it to get a feel for how it, why it's good. I think I... Yeah, but I stopped flying Anakin pretty quickly. I was like, eh, I don't like him. I don't like... I know he's good, but... I'm not going to be that guy who flies Delta 7B R2 Anakin. Um, yeah, um, you got that hipster disease. The dial's good. Uh, no one banks, which is, um, eh, it can work around it. Uh, the one hards and the two hards are white, but it doesn't really stretch itself out very much. So I don't think it needs R4 Astromech. Like, I, I loved R4 on the Delta 7. Um, um. Yeah, no, it's got no, uh, it's got no red actions. It's all, it's pretty much all purple. So it's all about that, uh, that force economy. Yeah, and that's going to be the tough part. Is the force economy? Um, to the purple talon rolls. It's the first we've seen, but we, I think we knew they were coming for a while now. Uh, there's definitely speculation, and uh, like, and now we know that a red maneuver could very well turn into a purple one with things like season navigator and stuff like that but uh but yeah it's kind of kind of something that we figured could eventually happen yeah uh 4k as well which is red and i think that i that's just good to have nice to have nice 4K. To have. It, yeah it's a good solid just we need to not have this engagement but we also need to get back into it very soon it's just a good solid maneuver uh four straight that's blue that's nice uh, yeah, it doesn't have any blue hearts, which is a bummer, but, I, again, the ship probably doesn't need it. Yeah, and if it, if you really think you need it, R4 Astromech is two points, and easily worth it. Yeah, uh, I think this one, oddly enough, might be a really good candidate for, uh, the lock-on mech, uh, I think it's R5, R3? Uh, just so that you can get two locks out of one force charge and just kind of not have to tax yourself that often. I yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Um, R two D two most expensive astromech in the game. Yes or no? Uh, God, what to do? Uh, I'm trying to find that that one spoiler. Uh, so it's it's the competition is I think BB eight on a on Poe Dameron. R two D two is really I guess it's you you know yeah. oh, it says repair a damage card not repair a face up oh yeah shit. yeah no this this boy is gonna be like one and a half gonks and you only you only gain a deplete token you don't even gain a disarm token yeah the, this is definitely gonna be like really just not worth it levels of expensive. Unless you're Unless like, you're like 15, 16 points. I feel like it only it does see play in those. They want to create uh, a list. They want people to be able to fly Obi Wan and Anakin and nobody else and feel like they're they're having a fun time. Yeah, like they're they're definitely pushing a two ship ace list. Uh, do I think it's gonna work out? 
probably not quite, but Ben be and Boba and Finn is a thing, so it's just it's just kind of hard to see that being like, eh, like I just can't see a world where two Eddas is going to be a like a strong list just because it's so fragile. Yeah, if it is a str- if it is a list, R two D 2s on it. Oh, definitely. Like, cause, uh, like, the the two Eddas are probably going to be like an average of seventy points each. So it's going to be, uh, it, like, you're going to have plenty of space to play around with upgrades. So in the spread for upgrades. There's a card on the far right. I think that's the epic card. Yeah, it's uh, it looks like the word commander is sticking out, and from what I could read off of it, it looks like a uh, it's describing uh, setting up a formation. Yeah, I like that they're that they're coming out with these more these epic cards in the regular packs. I think that's really neat. I don't play epic, but it's nice that they nice. exist. Yeah, it's a it's a good idea. Uh, let's see. Uh, it it, ven- it mentions viewing, so it might be kind of like this weird hybrid card where you uh, where you attach it to Vader, and then uh, you can put V wings onto it, because uh, that that seems to be the way that the text is going. Uh, and that I mean, it's it's meant to like have that uh, that transitional flavor, which I think is really cool. Uh, the card to the left of it is um, the hard something closure it's the talent that you thought was um droid tri fighter exclusive yeah uh yeah i guess that kind of kind of spoils it uh, for being on multiple things but it doesn't so like, go on the dr- it can't go on the uh, you pass over a token of some sort uh at range one to two but you have to pass over like a enemy ship or like a uh, an asteroid or something. If you move through an obstacle or... structure, huge ship, or if you uh, deployed, you may choose one friendly ship, one enemy ship in your front arc at range one to two. The ship gains one stress, a uh, strain token. Uh, probably not going to see too much play, uh, but it might be one of those things where, like, you kind of use it in epic because there's so much on the field, and it becomes a lot better in that kind of crowded environment. I think it's designed for epic. Um, also, can't go on the Eddas, so um, surprised it comes in this pack and not the V-Wing. Hey, that is kind of funny. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe uh, maybe that talent doesn't work on uh, freaking uh, on the Tri-Fighters then. Maybe it's just there to give it to the Nantex. Um, then, there's a, then there's an ability that has like Maneuver in it? Something Maneuvers... Uh, from what I can read, I am speculating that it is Daredevil, but a force power. I could fuck with that. Yeah, I mean, uh, being able to boost, uh, make it a purple in order to do a hard is not necessarily a bad idea, because Daredevil sees play. Yeah. Um, in, um, in fact, I think it'd be pretty good on uh, on the Aether Sprite more than the Ada. And, um, the thing is, with the Ada, is you get to do with the boost in the system phase. And then you can do a blue maneuver and clear the stress. Clear the stress. Uh, no, no, I'm, uh, like, it causes, uh, purple boost, not red boost, for, at the cost of the focus. It, it's oh, yeah. turning your white into a purple boost. You're right, you're right. So you wouldn't be able to do it on the system phase one. Um... And then there's Patience, which we've seen. Yeah, we know what Patience is. Yeah, you take a deplete token at the start of your engagement phase. If you have a target you can shoot at in your front arc. Or, I guess, just in your front arc, you don't necessarily have to have a ability to shoot at it. If you have, like, a turret or something, I guess. So that applies... So, yeah, you can, um... There's not that many ships that have that, have that ability. I think Ray is the only one Ray I can think the- of. Uh, Ray, uh, maybe Leia. I don't know if Leia gets force powers. Though. I, you're right. You're. Right. I don't know. I haven't seen her on the table yet. Um, um yeah, take a deplete token, get back a force. It's, it's not a bad thing. Yeah, it's very thematic to light side. Uh, it's a very nice complement to hate. 
yeah, it'll like it's definitely not gonna be a auto include on uh, on the Ada two just because uh, even though it's really force hungry and it kind of wants it back, like it's also really uh, really painful for the uh, for the offensive ability of the ship. Do you think it's gonna be costed based off red dice? Um, that's tough to say. Uh, it might be costed off of initiative, oddly enough. Okay. It could also just be flat, though, and I think that'd be fine. Yeah, I, I only bring up red dice because that technically means um, it is... You can get it on the Delta 7B and pay the two red dice cost. Yeah, uh, even if it was costed based on red dice, I don't think the uh, the price difference would be more than like a point, so it wouldn't really be a big deal. Yeah, yeah, I was just speculating, and then the R two, and then the hyperspace ring. I'll be honest with you, I don't really care about the hyperspace ring. Uh, well, from what they said on the stream, apparently it's not going to be hyperspace or extended legal. It's honestly, it's just something there that's just kind of fun. That's why and, I don't care about uh, it. <laughs> Like, it just looks cool. And you know what? I'm okay with that. The fact that we pay nothing for it because uh, it's 20 the, the box is $20 is the best part. It's just like, it's a, you get a free ring. You get a free ring, and if you like a ship, you can slap it on there as long as it's a V-Wing, an Ada 2, or an Aether Spray. Yep. It's free real estate. Free real estate. Just paint it up like an onion ring. Uh, so I guess we move on to the droid. Tri fighter. Um, we already talked. We I know you and I. We we like the design behind um its action bar. It has network calculations. It is has a good dial. I don't know what to think about the one talon rolls. Yeah, the, the one talent rolls are odd, but weirdly enough, I think it's better than the one K on the uh, on the vultures because I, I can see a world where a one talent is actually used for something. Um, it's got missiles. It's got Discord missiles. It's got a uh, system. It's got a sensor slot. I believe. I think that's FCS. FCS. On the side. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's got an FCS and spread. Uh, sensors would make sense. It's very much a independent hunter killer, so having some like ship sensing equipment is in flavor. Yeah, um, it has two generics, um, a three pip i three. I want to say it has a one pip three and a one pip four. Uh, yes, and then the uh, two pip five. I'm interested to see if the two... I think the two pip-5, unless it's horribly overcosted, is going to be good. Uh, probably. Uh, and it, its ability, I don't have full text on, but it looks like uh, you can spend your lock on the target to do something during the system phase. Unfortunately, I don't know what the, uh, what the benefit is for spending your lock. So at least if you have that missed opportunity when you lock on something, you can... Maybe uh, maybe get some actual value out of it uh, without having to constantly jockey for position and try and get that extra shot in. Yeah, I mean, we only know, we only fully know one pilot. And that's the uh, the name DIST81, I think is yes. the... Yeah. And his ability is just... It's, it's, it's essentially network calculations, but at... And but at like range three, and the uh, guy that you're taking tokens from has to be within the uh, arc of the uh, of the enemy ship that's involved, which makes him a better target lock ship than some of the others. Yeah, it's it's not bad. Uh, it's I four though, so I like anything I four. It's kind of tough to find a good spot for it. Yeah, um, I don't know, Can you have you looked at any of the other uh, droid pilot abilities? Uh, the 3-pip is, uh, 
has a condition uh, that it can place on things during the setup. Uh, I'm not sure what it does, obviously, uh, but it's uh, like the fearful pilot condition. So I'm guessing it's going to be a stress-related ability, which sounds pretty spicy. Yep, yep. It might be like one of those, it might be like a one-time uh, spend a lock to cause stress tokens to happen and just kind of just kind of mess with your opponent's ability to do things at a pivotal point. So the one, the one pip three is at the start of the engagement phase, you may acquire a lock, something, something, range one to three, something, something. Yeah, and that one, uh, since it's a one pip, it's probably nothing crazy amazing, because one pips in droids are usually not too good. Uh, like, they're usually interesting, but you can't really do much since you're usually more about the collect swarm than anything else. It's normally an ability that isn't great, but it would be way too powerful if it was uh, spammed. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it might be something that kind of allows it to be just thrown in as like a filler ship in a more uh, in a more independently minded list, like. Uh, like if you you could put it alongside Grievous and uh, and Nantex and whatever, like you know, just a kind of like a mixed forces list. Imagine if you could bring multiple Butterbots. Butterbots. The the yeet the calculate token vultures. Oh oh yeah the uh, DFS three eleven I think. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that gets a, deserves a one pip. Yeah, definitely. Um, good dial, good actions. So, look, from right to left, we have the Intercept Booster. I don't understand this card. Alright, so, uh, you have three charges. They automatically count down once per turn, so you can only, uh, you can only use it for three turns, uh, at the beginning of the fight. It gives, uh, it's... Automatically gives you disarm tokens at the start of all, every turn. And it's just kind of meant to, uh, it's there purely because you want that slam action. And, uh, it's weird. Uh, I speculate it's going to be there so that you can kind of do like a flanking, uh, engagement. You can send them around the board while, uh, your main force goes up in, in a solid block. And then you can engage from two angles simultaneously. Uh, but aside from that, I don't think it's going to see too much use, unless the flip side of the card is really interesting. Okay. Yeah. It just, to me, it seems like, I'm just, like, trying to wrap my head around it, and I guess you're right. If I don't know what the other side of the card is, I don't know what the cost is, I really can't speculate on it too much. Yeah, uh, it's... It's weird since you can choose to either take a disarm token or flip it in the system phase or before die or something like that. Uh, but definitely before movement and activation. Uh, so it's uh, it's just there to get you engaged, and that's kind of the purpose that it served in the movies as well. It was basically an attachment to allow them to be fired out of torpedo tubes. Uh, so like. What the other the other side could just be nothing, but it could. Uh, although I don't think that that would actually be what it is. They just say remove all tokens uh, to make it so that you just can't use the card. Uh, I think the flip side is going to be something interesting. Like maybe you can use the depleted rockets as a one time use missile or something. Maybe. <laughs> um. Then to the left of that we have calculations so not only and i do i think it's really cool that they're doing this you know what the best part is yeah i i haven't seen much of the card but it looks like it affects network calculations it Wait, might remove it? it it does they did they they mentioned this in the stream uh it is a card that only goes on ships that have network calculations it replaces network calculations with an ability that uh, makes them better independent ships. All right, so yeah, that that could be pretty spicy. Uh, it's uh, you also get you also, two of them. Actually, like it probably goes really well with uh, 
like the the one pip that we don't know the name of fully, because since that one seems to be able to acquire its own locks or independently of actual actions, so that might be uh, might be where it finds its place. It also the pack comes with two of them, which I think is really cool. Yeah, that's a smart move since it can be placed on uh, things that aren't tri fighters. Uh, this might also be the way that we get DBS 404 to to finally be the good boy he deserves to be. Oh yeah, this is a huge buff to 404. Um, we have a new missile question mark. Range one and two. Uh, yeah, the, the thread tracers or whatever. Two charges, three attack dice. Requires a target lock. Yeah, so uh, unfortunately we're we're waiting on text for this one to have any speculation on what it can do. Yeah, but, and we already talked about, everyone knows Discord, everyone knows FCS, and we did talk about hard seal closure, how it was more of an epic upgrade than it is anything else. Although I did just notice on those missiles, uh, it says range 1 to 3, so we've got a Magpulse warhead kind of set situation on our hands where it, you may just slap it onto a ship just to have a 3 dice attack. I don't know, it's called Tracers, that's not really a damn. That tra when I hear Tracers, you don't really think damage, you know? You think this makes other ships better. Ooh, uh, it might, uh, it might drop strain tokens on something that it hits. It might be like a, like a Ion Missile, where it's just one damage, and then drop a, drop a debuff token on I could see that, I could see that, yeah. Um, so we got one more ship left. And oh boy, what a ship it is. A uh, very familiar one. We don't need to talk about its stats. We don't need to talk about its action bar. We don't need to talk about its dial. We just need to talk about the pilots and uh, and the cards, because... Jango Fett is the reverse Regali. Uh, Jango Fett is the reverse Regali. He wants to go slow. Well, uh, not necessarily slow. He just wants to do an easier action than you. So if you do a white... Oh, oh it's difficulty. I thought it was speed. Yeah. I didn't, no, I didn't difficulty. Read. So it's actually pretty limiting for Django. It's kind of bad. That's... Yeah, it is. But it, I... And that's... So in the stream, they talked about Django Fett, and they were the developers were saying that Django Fett's a six. We still think he's worse than Boba. Yeah, you're you're taking Django because he is an I six, especially since they're separatists and I sixes are kind of like a new special unique thing for you. Uh, uh, since you know Sunfac pretty much got tossed out of the meta as soon as he became uh, playable. There is one interesting thing though with Django Fit. This it, it probably not worth it at all, but the ship has a cannon slot. Well, I mean, uh, fire sprays uh, all have cannons. Slots. Yeah, yeah. So, because uh, one of the problems with Sun Fac is how is he the only way to make? There's only two ways beforehand to make him fire at a tractor ship. Oh right, yeah. So, uh, but I because you don't have a way to bonus attack with them, I don't see a world where spending the point or spending your I six attacker to throw down a. Throw down a tractor beam is really all that great, especially when we already have uh, Count Dooku who can do uh, the same thing with uh, with heightened uh, reflexes or whatever the initiative seven card is. Oh yeah, I didn't think it was good. I just had to bring it up. Um, so Django Fett, uh, hard ability to work, I six and a good chassis. Um, Zam Wessel. And, and the fact that G has said that they don't think it's as good as Boba then it may very well be cheaper than Boba as well. So that's actually really good for the Separatists. I think they implied it's going to be cheaper than Boba. I think 82, 84. Uh, I'm going to go... I'm going to be spicy here and say 79. Okay, okay. Uh, Zam Wessel, I5, has a condition card. Doesn't have one condition horror card, has like four. I fucking... It's a lot of text. All right, you're right. Looking at them, they're all Sam Wessels. You should thank me, you should thank me, and then something, 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 something. 
Yeah, and they're all hidden, so like it's meant to be like you're not sure what Zam Wessel's got up his sleeve, but he's going to be doing something. Yeah, but you know what? I five good chassis. Probably, probably like, right. one of those conditions. Will, like those conditions will just be fun. And uh, since and the kind of kind of the neat thing about it is that you can choose which condition is going to work best for the list that you're up against in a tournament setting since you don't have to assign your condition until the setup. Yeah. Um, and then finally, you got Kid Boba at three. Uh, while you defend something something friendly ship. Something something focus token range one. I just... Yeah, probably gonna be okay. Uh, I think it's gonna be like a much worse version of his uh, scum ability, uh, in that it'll probably only like have be able to affect like one roll. So it'll it'll be okay. Uh, it just won't be like as crazy as his original ability, obviously. Yeah, yeah. His original ability might very well be top five, top three best ability in the game. Yeah, but hey, I three Boba Fett. Uh, it's it's a fire spray. Uh, it'll be it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, upgrades. We got Dead Eye Shot, which we didn't talk about earlier. It's it's what you spend. It's basically kind of like um. Uh, m not Mark Steele, the X-Wing pilot, Fane, but with a condition. Yeah, you have to spend a, uh, a, you have to spend something in order to, uh, flip a, flip a card instead of doing your regular attack. And they have to be on your bullseye. Yeah, uh, I think it'll be a decent card. Like, it'll, it'll see some fringe play here and there, just because being able to reveal cards is really nice uh, especially if we're going into this like beefier meta that we're kind of seeing with the points change higher hull yeah uh debris gambit um it hasn't seen play yet so uh is that debris gambit uh probably uh yeah yeah i think it was debris gambit in the spread yeah it's a renovade uh then there's i think jamming beam Indeed, whatever. Um, we're going to skip the next one because we'll talk about him. Uh, Django Fett is a crew or a gunner. Yeah, we don't have a terribly good read on his ability. It's just something that happens when you're performing an attack, I think. Yeah, I think uh, you'd rather him be a crew just because that means he can be in uh, the Sith Infiltrator. Yeah, I mean, we... We're definitely spoiled for good ships that uh, that require some good crew, and because the Sith infiltrator is great, the uh, the fire spray is going to be good by default. Having more crew options is fantastic for us. My question to you: Do you think, um, well, do you think Django Fett will be scum and separatist as a crew or gunner? Uh, as a, as an upgrade, I think, I think he'll be both, because, uh, Boba's both, right? Boba is both. Yeah, so, yeah, let's, let's put him in both, and I think, I think that'd be cool. Okay, and then I think, to the right, I want to say that's Zam Wessel, with two charges. Uh, yeah, that, that looks like what the spoiler con condensed list is saying as well. Okay. Um, probably Scum and Separatist as well. Uh, not much to go on, though. Uh, then Boba uh, then... Fett. Yeah, we, uh, we have Boba Fett in the gunner seat. Uh, when you perform an attack, if there are other ships in the attack, or if there's no other ship in the attack arc, you may choose, uh, one of your focus results and turn it to a hit. Uh, it's, it's okay, it's not bad. It's... I'm interested to see, because there's a lot of, in, in Separatists, it's only going to go on one ship. So the real question is, does this make any scum ship much better? Uh, I think, 
I could see it putting getting put on a uh, on like a jump master uh, could probably yeah jump master could probably use it pretty well. And it's also not it doesn't say primary attack, so turrets, cannons, missile, like all those things count. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's it's just a solid, interesting card because uh, there's plenty of lists where the Boba Fett condition will be fulfilled pretty much by default. Um, five, six points. Do you think? Uh, yeah, going. Um, I'm gonna go four. Uh, but it might get raised in a future update. At four, he's almost an auto-include in a lot of lists. Well, it's, uh, I'm, I'm kind of pricing it like, uh, somebody would price Fearless, and that's, uh, especially since it's only a one of them. We got a, then there, so next to Boba Fett, there's something which looks to me like Gunner. A uh, spoiler list is saying the name is Systems Officer. Uh, you know, that's obviously, like, maybe it is, maybe it isn't kind of territory, but uh, it's probably it's probably just something kind of, like, generically supportive. After you attack, you may something something. If you do, the ship does something unless it, spe- unless it takes a damage. Maybe... Uh, maybe it distributes a token of some sort. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we have... No, no, no. So you're saying systems officer. There's something to the left of systems officer. Yeah, there's... there's, uh, there's... I, I don't see it myself, but I don't have the, the spread itself uh, up on the screen at the moment. There you go. It's to the right of Boba Fett, to the left of Systems Officer, like a gunner. But then there's Systems Officer. That sounds so generic, I am almost thinking it's an epic card. Uh, yeah, honestly, I have no idea. Yeah, whatever. So, we have one last thing to talk about, and I say we. I want to hear your hot takes. On, uh, on the lad himself, Hondo Okana. So, you so do... uh, well, we gotta explain this card first, because right now, as it's written, and with the way the rules are written, it just straight up does not work. But obviously, they've got plenty of time to make the rules update needed. Uh, so yeah. you choose two ships at range one to three, and they don't have to be friendly to you, but they have to be friendly to each other. One of them gets coordinated, one of them gets jammed. Uh, right now, coordinate doesn't work on enemy ships, but I'm sure that'll be errata uh, when by the time the card comes out. Uh, the big thing here is that... Uh, is that you can target enemies with it or allies with it and kind of be flexible and try and uh, try and make it so that the ship that gets coordinated is uh, is going to be not relevant if you target an enemy and then you can jam the thing that's really dangerous so, or so, vice versa for allies. Hold up, you are saying that you think you should be able to coordinate enemy ships, but they choose the action. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to be the situation because uh, coordinating an enemy ship and then choosing what it does is super toxic. It is absolutely the single worst ability, the the worst ability I could ever imagine ever. added to a game. It would be the first 501 point crew so that you couldn't even field it in epic. Yeah, it's just, hey, you're flying too close to the edge. How about I boost you to the right so that next turn you have to yeah. fly at the edge? Yeah, like, they, they cannot let people do that. So, uh, but I have found ways to make this, uh, make this an interesting sabotage ship regardless. So, uh, are you familiar with the talent card squad leader? 
Uh, yes, yeah, that's the one that gives you a red coordinate. Yeah, but the text on the card says when you coordinate, the uh, coordinated ship can only do an action that is on your action bar. So, yeah, if you have a crappy action bar, they won't be able to coordinate anything. And, uh, and in doing some research, I found a sheathapede in the Rebels named AP-5. Uh, AP-5, being a droid, has Calculate, and the sheathapede itself has a uh, Coordinate. And those are its only two actions. And somehow, this droid has a talent slot at I-1. Yeah, so just, you know, range three jams for absolutely no consequence unless you happen to be up against a droid list, in which case it honestly doesn't matter too much if they get one calculator. And then you never use Hondo's ability to coordinate an allied ship because AP5 is, like, the best coordinate in the game. Exactly. So, like, there's zero down, like, that and uh, we know Hondo's probably going to be scaling with initiative because giving an I6 initiative, or uh, coordinate, is really freaking crazy. So the fact that AP5 is initiative 1 means it's going to be super cheap to get Honda. Oh, that's... Okay. Yeah, you're right. Um, you have definitely fought this more than I have. I actually have nothing to add to this. I, I, I'm, all I'm glad is we are in absolute agreement that getting an enemy ship to perform an action is... is. Absolutely yeah, just the, the absolute worst possible idea. They should have already learned that making enemy ships do things is kind of a bad thing after the Nantex debacle. However, I do have more to say about Hondo because I have a uh, I have an offensive uh, situation where he could really shine as well. Lay it on me. So uh, the cool thing with uh, with it is that it's just kind of an action. And there are ships that can do actions outside of the normal activation phase. So you could slap this guy on, say, uh, Dooku or uh, Tapsin, and when they trigger their abilities to do an action, you can do it then, and then you can coordinate ships that are have already acted in the attack phase. And then they're pretty much doing nothing while you jam something else. Or you can do it to have perfect information on uh, your own ships, which ones can be jammed without consequences and which ones could take an extra action. You're right. You're right. This on Dooku would be pretty cool. Yeah, and, and I think it'd be fine on Tabson as well. So, like, uh, I think the only faction where you don't really have a decent target for this is probably resistance because you stress yourself so much uh and then also empire because they have so many better coordinate opportunities as is yeah yeah you're right yeah there's there's really nothing that breaks the action economy in a large ship um outside of um ships that already do so already do fine with regular coordinate yeah, uh, I could also maybe see it be played on Rebel uh, Lando, just because uh, you get the extra action for doing the blue maneuver, and maybe on uh, Scum Han, just because the ship is so cheap that it just won't matter, and you'll have like a, it'll probably be like 60 points overall, but you'll have essentially a much tougher version of Fen Rao in the Sheep of the I think that's a stretch. It's a stretch, but you know it, it might it might be a thing just to experiment with a little bit. Although, uh, uh, no, yeah, uh, yeah, probably not. But it's it's an option for an I six coordinate. Okay, just gonna scroll up this list. I think we've done it. I think we've talked about everything that was announced. Um, I don't think there is. There's obviously there's you could talk about a lot more about like list and stuff, but that's not why we're here. We've already we're getting close to two hours, so we probably should have stopped pretty soon. Pretty soon, yeah, probably. <laughs> okay, that's I, I managed be. to drop the one big bomb that I have, and that's AP five being absolutely silly with Hondo. That that's just like that's warrant almost warranted its own video after I've had like but another time. Yeah, and that combo is probably only going to be like 38 points, so it might be worthwhile, and people probably won't pay it too much attention. 
it probably won't be nearly as good as I hope it is, but it's it's just so fun. Yeah, you're right. Well, that's it for that. Thanks for talking, and we'll do the generic video sometime. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You have a good day, man. You too.